This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We are back today and we're gonna go ahead and make this repair. Uh, this is our walk-in freezer that the superheat was too low, had caused an issue. So what we've got to do because of, and I'll pull it apart and remind you guys, but because of the way this thing is piped, we got to recover the gas to go ahead and change the dryer. So I'm gonna get the unit pulled apart. Um, got my tools roped up onto the roof. My recovery tank right here is pressurized with nitrogen. In my area, if they, uh, actually that was in a vacuum, so I'm gonna make sure it pulls it into a better vacuum. Um, if they have plastic on them, they typically mean that they're in a vacuum. If they don't, then they're usually nitrogen pressurized. So I must have pulled this one down. But since I opened it, I'll go ahead and I planned on hooking up the vacuum pump anyways. And so I'll pull it into a deep vacuum. Then we'll go ahead and get the recovery equipment hooked up recover the charge out of this unit and change an expansion valve, solenoid valve and temp control and then put a new liquid line filter dryer and sight glass and then we're going to move it to the other side of the valve so that way we can use the existing valve that's in here. I'll show you guys in a minute as a king valve. So the plan is recover the charge out of this unit and the reason why we have to recover the charge is because look there's no valve before the dryer. There's no king valve right there. There's actually what would be called a king valve right here but the dryer is between that and the receiver. So there's no way to pump the system down to get all the refrigerant out. Now you could pump it down via this, but then the refrigerant would be stuck from this side back basically. So we're gonna go ahead and recover the charge out of this guy. We're gonna get this redone. We're gonna put the sight glass and dryer on the other side here now and leave this valve where it is. And then that way we can use this as a king valve for the next time. So while I'm waiting for the vacuum on the tank, I noticed that uh, the unit had turned on, so I went ahead and front seated this valve and pumped the refrigerant down. So now all the refrigerant should be stored basically back here. It'll just make it quicker to recover so I'm not pulling down from the evaporator coil. Um, so uh, I can go ahead and um, hook on the uh, VCRT's vacuum core removal tools, pull out the Schrader core. I don't know if I can get on this one without taking the valves off, but I might just hook it up on this one. We'll see. But all the refrigerant should be mostly in the high side. So actually, I probably don't even need a VCRT on this because it's just going to be a little bit of refrigerant vapor in the low side. So understand that since I front seated this valve right here, the system continued to run and it pulled all the refrigerant out of here, out of the liquid line, and it came all the way back up through the low side and the valves and the compressor kept pumping until the pressure got low enough and this low pressure control right here cut the system out. So theoretically, there should only be like 20 or 30 PSI down in the evaporator. All the other refrigerant should be up here in the condenser. This is stupid. This valve, the way that it works is, um, it basically gives me the pressure reading on this side of the valve. So if you look, I've got it pumped down, but I've only got seven PSI of pressure. So this Schrader port is coming from this side and not from this side. Again, it'd be so much better if we had a traditional king valve on the receiver. So I am gonna have to open this up. I can't run it pumped down because I won't be able to recover anything. So I'm gonna have to open this up and then recover while it's open basically. So we're gonna open that back up. You'll see your pressures rise as I open it and the system's gonna turn back on. As soon as the low pressure control senses the right pressure, there you go. So I'll just open this all the way and then uh, shut off the condensing unit and just recover from both high and low. I went ahead and hooked onto here so I can get the Schrader port out and we'll get recovering now. I'm not pulling very much refrigerant, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull through my gauges instead of using the Megaflow. So I've got my high side open and my process hose open, so I have pressure here. I have this loose, so that way I can go ahead and open this up. Let the pressure kind of come out of here. Bleed the refrigerant or the air out of the line, okay? So now we're good. And then I can go ahead and open this up. Now, um, I have an empty tank here. And I know that this system won't take any more than 21 pounds, which is the maximum amount, I believe, of our R404A that this tank could take. So I don't have my scale up here, but I will weigh it when I go downstairs if I need to. Um, but you always wanna be careful, make sure that you don't overfill these tanks. There is a uh, amount that you can overfill it and then it can be dangerous. So you wanna make sure you're not overfilling them, okay? Um, so I can go ahead and open this up. Once most of the gas pushes into the tank, I'll go ahead and uh, um, turn it on and I'll go ahead and invert the tank too. We're running now. Um, I'm just waiting for it to recover. I uh, 
I'm gonna wait till the high side gets at or near the low side pressure, then I'll open up the low side port. Um, I've already done everything I could up here. I started sanding everything. We'll get everything cut out. I'll go down to the van and get some materials. I'm just trying to make use of my time and be as efficient as possible to make this whole process go faster. Got a bunch of stuff up here, all my tools and crap. Uh, we're definitely pulled down. Negative 15, so we'll go ahead and close this guy off. Turn the machine off, get everything taken apart, and then we'll explain where we're gonna go from there. Okay. Um, we're gonna get a nitro purge on this bad boy. I've got the solenoid valve open downstairs. We'll get the gauges out of the way. purging nitrogen through go ahead and start cutting things when you're purging in a situation like this it's not going to be perfect because some of that nitro is going to start coming out the easiest spot which is going to be where I'm at there's no perfect way to get the nitrogen to flow through the system completely especially once you have things cut open okay at this point we can just start on sweating things I run a number two tip, so I kind of run a little bit of a hot flame, but I use number two for almost everything. Remember, we're going to try to utilize the existing valve. I'm just kind of getting everything piped. We'll start coming together and you guys will start understanding what I'm doing here right now. I got this tiny little tape measure from Lowe's. It comes in handy when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. So, what we need is an estimate as to where we need this bend at make this fit in there and I say about right there actually I don't need the tape measure for that I think I went a little bit low but I, there's there's something I'm gonna do to make it up so it'll be okay so that's gonna push into that this is actually gonna get cut right down the middle because I'm gonna put a, uh, a 3 8 Schrader fitting there so I can see high side pressure in the system when we're pumping it down. There we go. And then that way, we can get a good pressure. There. This is gonna end up going here. I'm just gonna thread it on there by finger. And then, uh, See if I have a piece of coffee here. I don't know if this is long enough. It's kind of a stretch. Let's not stretch it. Shoot, I'm SOL. I don't have another flare nut, so I gotta use a pre-made flare. 
So I guess I could have used that little piece of copper. Cut it right about there. I'm not gonna tighten the dryer in yet. We're just gonna leave it there so that way we can be brazing with nitrogen flowing through the system. Take a little bit of sandpaper. We'll sand up our fittings now. Silphos. I'm actually using the solder weld round rods. They're pretty nice. So I have the power on. The solenoid valve still open downstairs, so the nitrogen has a place to go. moved on me, but it's okay. It's still there. At this point, I've got the dryer installed. I haven't tightened it down yet. I'm actually gonna let everything cool. Um, everything's brazed in. I'll inspect all my braze joints and we're ready to go downstairs and change the expansion valve and the um, solenoid valve and the temp control, so. All right, um, this is the one that the expansion valve was uh, flooding the coil out. So I made temporary adjustments. I ran it in and out a bunch of times, got it to free up whatever was in there but we're changing the valve over to a Sporlin. Um, probably gonna go ahead and change the solenoid valve also and then put a new temp control because I don't like that style and they're not very accurate. So at this point, I've got the power turned off on the roof. I'm gonna start disassembling everything. Then we'll size up the valve and figure everything out. All right, so um, I have a document here. I just Google searched HTPG, which is Heat Transfer Product Group. That's who makes this evaporator coil. 
and uh, our evaporator coil model number, we got to scroll down to the right model number. It's a low profile unit cooler and it's a um, 2692 is our model number designation. Uh, if we go right here to negative 10 room, negative 20 suction, 2692 is a 9200 BTU coil and it says to use an A cartridge balance port expansion valve. So that's what we're going to use. So I've got my Sporlin BQ kit right here. Go ahead and open it up. We'll find our body style. We're going to use the EBQ E body. We're going to use a KT43 SZ Sam Zebra low temp. And we need to use an A cartridge for uh, the cartridge. So that's an A or a blue. So here's the blue right here. So we'll use that. We'll assemble the valve. Uh, the, the kit comes with all the goodies. Comes with the oil and the little nut. So we'll get this guy assembled. When I'm done assembling them, I'll put the boxes back in there and put an X on them. And then that way I know I need to replenish those. Another thing I need to point out is this isn't the normal BQ case. This is actually a prototype one that Sportland is having me test out with a super heavy duty case. I really like it because it's like a waterproof design. Um, give me your thoughts in the comments what you guys think. Do you think this heavy duty case is nicer? It doesn't quite fit on a standard van shelf, so I do have to have a bungee that holds it in. It doesn't fit and set down basically. Um, but I think it's a pretty nice case and it's a pretty pretty heavy duty. So Okay, so I've got myself purging with nitrogen I'm gonna go ahead and sand up and cut everything out as that I can as much as I can and then uh, We'll have nitrogen in there the whole time because there's a lot of moisture in this box It's very cold in here. So I'll try to assemble it and keep it assembled as much as possible that we were keeping moisture out of the system to try to prevent a longer vacuum basically so Everything, prepare, make it easier. Clean everything. We're not having to deal with it later. Remember, if it, something bad can happen, it will. So you should always assume that shit's gonna go sideways. So just be ready for it. Okay. Okay. 
here. There's that whole valve assembly. This guy, you need to bend all the way down, nice and tight. solenoid valve was moving on me so solved that problem okay
more than enough solder. I'm usually really liberal on my solder. Okay, now I'm gonna go upstairs, clean up down here, and uh, go get the vacuum running, and then I'll come up and do um, electrical stuff. All right, we're in the process of running the vacuum right now. Remember, I got the solenoid magnet downstairs. Uh, my vacuum is at 6,000 microns. I'm gonna let it run for a few more minutes, and then I'll close the gas ballast, and then we'll be vacuuming down. Uh, and then I'm gonna start doing electrical downstairs, and then I have someone coming up here to start fixing this insulation on this line right here. Alright, so our valve's in, sensing bulb nice and good, I'll get some zip ties and secure that. Sensing bulb mounted over here, we'll insulate it here in a few minutes, tighten it up, it's still a little bit loose, so I'll snug it up. Um, I still got the magnet on here because we're pulling the vacuum. Um, yeah, I'm just wrapping it up, I'm going to mount the temp control now and wire up the solenoid valve and get that going. Alright, so we are back together, cleaned up, everything's in there, nice and safe insulated thermostat bulbs up on the wall up here probably do something to clean that up a wee bit or something i'll figure that out i had someone else install that but um yeah so we're gonna test power right now make sure the solenoid valve opens and closes i'm in the process of charging this guy and remember that with this micron gauge it can take positive pressure so basically you leave it on there until you put pressure in the system and then you take it off so now we're just kind of Letting gas into the high side. I have the liquid line solenoid valve shut downstairs so my low side's not coming up yet. And I'm just dumping charge in there as much as it'll take. And uh, then we will uh, start it up and clear up the sight glass. Started it up. It's gonna take a minute. And we'll go ahead and clear up the sight glass. Our box temp actually didn't come very high so 
We're gonna let it run for a minute and then we'll clear it up. Go from there. All right, so now I can actually see the head pressure as it's pumping down. So I front seated this valve, pumped it down um, just to make sure that it would pump down and we're good. So I can go ahead and open it back up now and we know that it actually works and we can watch the sight glass clear up. Sight glass is running clear. I didn't even put all the gas in the system. There's still a little bit in the tank. Um, but I am going to uh, clean the condenser too, just to be safe, because I can't see light through it. But it's running, I can feel air. Um, my pressures don't look horrible. It's about 100 degrees outside right now. So my condensing temp was running about 30 degrees over ambient. Eh, you know. I'm gonna clean the condenser first and then we'll check on it a little bit more. But we're looking good and the system's all running. We'll put it together. We'll make sure that this cap always stays on the outside to protect the glass from the sun and I'm gonna start wrapping this up. So we were able to clean the condenser. It actually was rather dirty. Uh, we're still running a clear sight glass. The head, the condenser's still wet, so the head pressure is really low, but it is gonna um, come back up. But yeah, we're looking good, clear sight glass, so I'm not gonna add any more gas. We're gonna go ahead and put this guy together and uh, call it a day, basically. Go down and check to make sure that the thermostat's accurate. That's the last thing I'll do. Um, we can't really check evaporator superheat because I'm not going to wait for it to come down to temp. We'll check it the next time we come out. But usually these valves come preset for about 8 degrees superheat when it's a low temp valve. So we should be good. So we've got a thermometer back here. It says 8 degrees. And then we're going to check the thermostat, see where it turns on and off at. Alright, so we're going to turn it and see where it clicks at. Okay, so we want to maintain, uh, they want about negative five in this box. They don't really keep much ice cream in here. So it is a little bit off. These things are never 100% accurate, so you've got to field adjust them. So this should be good. All right, so this was just a typical, you know, return visit. I changed an expansion valve on a walk-in freezer. Um, you know, I showed the link. If you haven't watched the first video, feel free to go back. But in the very beginning of this video, there's a link to the first video. But um, initially we had a service call where the box wouldn't temp right. What I found was that the superheat, the expansion valve basically was flooding back to the compressor. It wasn't allowing the box to come down to temp properly. Um, went ahead and made some adjustments temporarily, got them operational, got approval to come back out, change the expansion valve, dryer, all that good stuff. And you guys saw all that inside the video. Okay. Um, not really too much going on here. I did end up going back the next day actually, because I had a service call on their ice machine. So I was able to go ahead and check the superheat and we were good. Like I thought, um, box was down to temp the next morning. No problem. Uh, I imagine it was down to temp about two hours after I left. It just was going to take a little while and I didn't want to waste any more time. So um, nothing too crazy in this one. Uh, out of preference, I went ahead and changed the uh, expansion valve. And I'm sorry, out of uh, preference, I ended up changing the temperature controller and went ahead and changed the solenoid valve. Um, just because I was going to be in there repiping everything anyways, changed everything over to spoiling components for the expansion valve. One of the, the pluses about the spoiling expansion valve is, is that if we ever have a problem again, we can take the valve apart, we can change the power head. You know, the other valve, you could take the bottom off, but you couldn't change the power head on it if it was problematic. Plus, I really don't care for those Alco Emerson valves. They're they're kind of a pain in the butt, in my opinion, but that's just my preference. I like the spoiling stuff. Uh, much more dependable, in my opinion. So, um, And I really like the fact that I can have my balance port kit or my build-a-valve kit, basically, BQ kit or B kit, and be able to... Um, you know, or Q body kit, I guess you could, you would call it, or the BQ kit. So the, the Q body is a standard valve. The BQ is the balance port kit. But um, I like being able to have that, and I could just basically build any valve that I want. It's really nice. So, um, But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Any questions, throw them down in the video comments. Um, send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. You can find me on the different social media platforms under HVACR videos. Um, I do live streams Monday nights, work permitting, meaning that if I get off in time and work's not too busy, then 5 p.m. Pacific time, I go live on YouTube and I answer all kinds of questions and stuff. So just pay attention to my channel. You should see the notification pop up um, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Okay. Thanks so much.